Continuing on the Resident Evil giant village villain costume. I've given up all hopes in trying to properly pronounce this name. So here we go. All right, so what I'm gonna be doing here, we're doing the back two pieces, which is the little fake capelet thing, and then of course like the, the back pieces. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my side front that I already made, and I'm just going to copy just just the sides, so on just on this side, okay? Like, don't, don't worry about what's on the other side. We're going to correct that. But I just want to copy the right side of this pattern so I don't have to do it again. Maybe it will work a little bit faster. And I know that the sides will match up perfectly because it's just a mirror copy of the front. So I have it all laid out here. Let me just outline it. And I did have to go out and get more wrapping paper because I, I was completely out and I couldn't, I couldn't Frankenstein all these little pieces together. So it, it is what it is. Okay, so that's this side. In fact, let me also copy the shoulders because that's, most of that is still gonna be pretty much the same. Let me resort back to my measurements. So right now, this piece isn't gonna be the total like chest bust circumference, right? It's just a part of the front. So we have to go back. So the bust in this case was 44. Half of 44 is 22. So on this corner here, let me go to 22. So I'm just going to draw this line so it's going to be 22. And I'm just going to use a different marker because remember, I don't like using my big fat black one unless I know like I'm not going to make any further changes. So that's the bust. Now in the end, I am only gonna probably have about half of this and then just have it like this where we just cut two, but I do need to put it, I do need to see where I'm at. So I am adding the whole half circumference of like the, the back of the body, just so I can make sure that the, the pattern pieces that I make do end up equaling to half of her circumference, you know what I mean, for her whole body. So that's the bust line there. So now that I've drawn my line for my bust, I'm just gonna go back. And again, remember, I'm always about finding my middle points because that keeps me even, that keeps me, it, it keeps me guided. So I have my ruler here, 22, the one is on this side. What's half of 22? 11, you don't say. So let me try and make a long, as best as I can, just a long line here, because when um, when I when I go to cut this, remember we're 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 not gonna make the 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 whole back piece because the back piece is not one piece; it's two pieces. So we're gonna do it like we have here. We're gonna have one paper pattern piece, and we're we know to cut two. So I'm trying to get that part where I cut two. So let me just make. And if this doesn't make any sense, I'm sorry. I will, you'll see in a moment when I get. So let me re-explain myself. So I, I, I outline the sides, so that way the sides will, have, will meet perfectly because they're just mirror images of each other. From the corner or the side of the bust, I went ahead and added back 20, 22 across so I can see where I'm at. And then from that 22, I made a half line. So basically, about from you know from here to here is going to be the actual pattern piece, and we're going to cut two. But at least now we know where the middle point was from the 22. Because remember, the the bust measurements I'm working with is 44 around. 
So do same thing. I'm going to check the waist, check the hips, the length. Let me fix this up here as well. Because right now I just have a T. Which again, is just kind of guiding me. But it's not, it's not set in stone yet. <clears throat> so see for here, I need to bring this up because the back is not like low plunging, right? But I know that when I go to raise the neckline, I'm going to stop here at my half point. That may be visible, that may be not, but again, I'm still gonna go back later with the black marker. I mean, you, you can kind of view it, you can see it from here. And also take note, this whole time that I'm doing this, I'm not moving my little paper pattern helper, the one that's right here, I'm not gonna move it. I'm just, um, it's, it's again, it's another guiding tool that I'm using to keep myself in check here. Uh, okay, so let me check the, where am I, where am I? Okay, waist. So it says here. Just got, got to get the torso so I know how far to come down on the waist. Waist here, it says 41. Half of 41 is 20 and a half. So I'm going to put that. I got the edge of the, the side of the pattern right on 20.5. 20, 20 and again, we ask, what's half of 20.5? 10 and a quarter. Ten and a quarter is right here. See how I said that middle point line is not set in stone? So, because remember, the front of this, it has the big cutout thing, so it seems things are a little warped right now. Maybe they are, but I will fix this. So from here to here was the waist. I'll draw the line on the original one. I don't, I don't mind. How much is this coming up? Two and a half. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add two and a half. to the middle line. Let's see. I'm going all the way down, two and a half. I'm just gonna extend it. All right, so I drew out the lines, drew everything in black so you could see what I did here. So we're gonna cut two of this, this is gonna be the back. Now where we're gonna have any kind of darts or anything, I'm gonna wait on that until I put the actual white dress when I cut this out and sew it on a mannequin that is similar to the measurements that, uh, that, have, that have been provided to me, and then I can see more or less where I need to put darts or take it in. 
but that's gonna be that. So now also what we need to do is let's, let's cut this out and then we're going to work on the little capelet, which you can kind of, sort of, almost see if you cheat a little bit or you can cheat, which is what I'm gonna do. So right now, once I cut this out, because the capelet is basically like from where my hand is to where it begins up here. It's very short, but also we're not gonna be including this arm, the armhole. You'll see. So again, we'll use this as a pattern to help us create the last piece a little bit quicker. And then from there, we're gonna shoot forward into time. I'm gonna have everything cut out. I'm gonna sew most of it together, except for the parts that I think that may be tricky for you, which is definitely gonna be the front with all the folds and um, attaching the capelet to the back once it's all put together. But after you have this cut out, I'm just gonna go ahead and like I said, cut all my pattern pieces out, sew them together, and then get down to the actual, I think, difficult parts. But let's get on to the capelet. Okay, I had to iron my shipping paper, a little piece that I had that I could use up. So, so pretty much if you look at the picture that she has, it's the little capelet is not that long. It looks like it passes like her armpit just a little bit. So like I said, we're gonna reuse this piece to mirror it onto this one so everything matches correctly when we go and cut the fabric. So I'm gonna put this on top of this. So the armpit is about here. So, oh, this actually works out. Look at that. Okay, I'm gonna put down my, my weight, AKA to toasters. Coasters. Doesn't matter much. So again, we're just gonna outline the shoulder. Copying the back piece, of course. If you try and do this with the front, you'll have you'll be taking more time trying to make it look like this. So just copy what you just made for the back piece. Now the armpit, <clears throat> um, you know what, let me mark that in something else. Cause remember, I'm not really gonna copy the armpit the way it is here. I'm just gonna outline so that way I can remove this and it, it still looks like it's on top of it. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's drawn out. So purple marker for temporary, not really lines. Get rid of these. So we're gonna kind of partially follow the, the arm size, but then kind of not really. So I'm judging this with my eye and with my eye, I judge. I'm gonna follow it about three inches worth of what I just outlined in purple. I'm gonna stop at about three inches. Then what I'm gonna do is get my ruler Am I gonna get my ruler? Hold on. Can I? Okay, so from where I stopped, here, let me use the purple one. I'm just gonna come all the way down. So again, I'm gonna go in three inches worth of the arm side and then I'm just gonna kind of follow a sort of straightish line. Mm. So this this was the cutoff, and then this is the the continuation. Okay. 
okay? Now, over here, I remember in the beginning, I discussed the capelet in the back. I wanna have like an overlapping thing going on so that way it appears to be one piece. Now, I did see an updated picture where the center of the capelet, which is weird because I didn't really see it in the other pictures where I can kind of see the back. It has like this triangular, kind of like in the front how it's all gathered. It has a little triangular, triangular piece like that that's a all gathered fabric in the center of the capelet. Now, I'm not too sure if I'm going to even include that in this tutorial. I just, I'm not... I'm not sure how I'm gonna do this. So I'm just gonna kind of stick to the game plan how I had before and just do the overlapping. So from the original line where it meets in the center on that other pattern I used, I'm going to come out one inch. Kind of thinking like about it if you've ever done envelope pillow covers, how you have on, on one, on like say the back of the, the pillowcase, you have the two pieces that are longer than each other so that way they can overlap and then it doesn't show, it doesn't gape open and show the actual pillow that's in the, the case when the pillow is being used. So that's, that's where I'm kind of taking inspiration on figuring this part out. So this will be the capelet. Let me go ahead and correct this as well. It was just a slight, uh, so, you know, here, here, remember, here's the armpit. So I'm gonna just straighten this out as much as I can, not trying to take off too much. And I don't think I'm, I'm gonna hurt it at, at all, really. And again, if you notice, I put the, the edge of the paper on these grooves that I have in my table. So anything, again, this is a very ghetto channel. So anything you can use that's built into your environment that it will help you keep straight lines, help you stay guided, you know, use that and I have the edge of my ruler too as well in this little straight groove that I have in my table so just some more ghetto tips for ya so this will be the capelet and we know that we're going to cut two and we'll figure out the the button and snap placement whatever or velcro whatever you want to use for closure when we get to the end. So let me go ahead and cut this. <clears throat> then we will definitely be ready to start sewing. Before you cut your fabric, quick tip, just remeasure everything together. Make sure that it equals, like all the pieces together. It equals the bust. It equals, you know, properly the waist the length in case there were any errors done while you're making the paper pattern right before you cut is the time to just kind of double triple check your work so that way you don't have to go out and buy more fabric if you mess up on the paper pattern and again um, in case you've forgotten i didn't add the seam allowance to these paper patterns so i will be adding three fourths of an inch to my actual fabric when I start cutting. So that's that. All right, see you in a bit. So here we are. I have the two side fronts put together with the back pieces. I'm about to insert the center piece, the, the big, the, you know, the big, uh, what do you call it? Gathered part. So here's my piece. Hopefully you are still with me. Don't forget, put this right sides together. Where's the flat part? So here, oh, can't even see that. Excuse me. Okay, so here's the flat part of that top piece. And you need it to go like right here. There's gonna have to be some finessing, I can tell already. But if it, 
my needles are like not sharp anymore. I need to throw these out. If you ever feel like you have to put any kind of actual effort into pushing needles through fabric, it's already dull. And I don't have one of those little strawberry things on my pin cushion because this is just a whatever. I never sharpen them because I don't have one. So, but anyways, so, so I have my two flat parts, as you could see, this is like the, this part is like super bulbous compared to the cut in the, the side front. So, like I said, I'm going to have to do some finessing, but I'll, I'll get it in there. I, I always do. Let me see. And since this bulbous part is also like, it, it is on the bias, you can kind of stretch it out and manipulate it to a certain extent. So if I need it to curve a little more, I can kind of just like tug on it and mess with it and it should work so see how i'm already like i said just making it work okay so i'm gonna do that and then i will show you when it's all put together on both sides attach the thing also i don't know if you could see all this this, it just, ha it happens with my serger, some, with some fat, it didn't have on my serger, which some fabrics, it just does that. It doesn't matter if they have like a new needle or not. So how you kind of fix this is it's merely just like, it's, it's all kind of tugged and like pulled. So what I have to do right now is with a, a steam iron is just kind of pull, I, it's hard to do with one hand, but you pull this back and then you got to steam it and then it'll look normal again see how it, it looks well I fixed that part see you have to do that so like everywhere I surged it did that so it's just one of those things it did it here I have to do the same thing also I surged the open back center part because when we do the the zipper it's just so much easier to put the zipper in and then when you press it open, the allowance, everything looks neat and clean. It's already surged. Um, plus it, it again reduces bulk also in the back. It's gonna be a tight dress. You don't wanna have too much bulk everywhere. So I like having that back center seam pressed open. Um, what else? But yeah, everywhere else I, I surged all the way around, all the way. Oh, it's a toe. All the way to the bottom. <laughs> so I'm going to gonna go ahead and go through the whole ironing and pulling process to get rid of these little puckers everywhere. And then after that, then I'm going to start gathering this to bring it a little bit closer. Because right now this whole thing with this just open like this and not scrunched is way bigger than the measurements. So I got to kind of like scrunch this down and start making the pleating and start manipulating it to look like the costume. Here I did the two capelets. Let me just kind of explain to you what I did real quick. So here's the right side facing us and here's the wrong side facing us. So what I did is I just got some binding tape and I only did, this is the, the back center. It's like this is the center back and then it goes up to the shoulder. So I did the binding tape here here i didn't do it here i just you know rolled it up hemmed it whatever and then here as you can see this is this is where the armpit is but i didn't want a lot of bulk in that area so what i did is i kind of like eyeballed from the shoulder to where the you know part of the the armhole like again this is me guesstimating and I just kind of rolled it in just a little bit so you could see this. It's like rolled up because again, I didn't want bulk. Like I didn't want to roll this all the way up and then I have to still sew this into the armhole. And then of course there's going to be a sleeve, you know, more layers of the sleeve that goes in here. So I just kind of sort of did it like, like that. Hopefully you can see it. So my hope is when I put this in 
and I align it up with the armhole and then insert the sleeve. The seam allowance will hide this and then it'll look neat and, and continuous. So that's what I did. I mean, you could always do doubles of this, but I figured since, you know, this part's going to be inserted in the armhole and then there's a sleeve going to be layered on top of this. Um, same thing here. This is going to be up in the shoulder area. I'm just trying to reduce bulk. So I just cut two and they're just single, single pieces. So that's what I did with the capelet. I have it mostly put together. I did the bias tape here finish this off again I won't show it because I assume you can sew but you know I, I did all the bias tape around so check it out I'm gonna put a um a snap here at the end when I do the hemming this is what I was talking about with the the capelet so I inserted it at the what is this body part called the shoulder at the shoulder here it is and then I also kind of just basted it a little bit so it doesn't flop around too much when I go to insert the sleeve. So that way, so right now I just have this closed up just just for to help me like keep things organized again. But then um, I am going to put in a, a zipper. So of course this is going to be open for entry. And then once she zips up, then she can snap this capelet back on. And that's that, right? So I, I had also gathered this prior to putting the bias tape just, just for any kind of, of extra pleating and gathering. And then I also measured from the top down here the, the torso measurement. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a thick band of elastic, which I don't know where I put because my room is just chaos right now. So okay, I marked it here with the pin where the, the torso is. So I think from this seam to the other seam for this little extra piece I put in for the center. I'm gonna put in elastic. And I think that that'll be the best way to do this. So I'll just make a line on the inside of the, or the wrong side of the dress, just a line like with chalk, so that way I can keep myself straight with the elastic and I'm gonna do it like that. So that way it'll hopefully, hopefully be tight enough on her where it, you know, it looks more like the costume. Right now it just kind of looks like a, like a nightgown, but it looks cool so far. And then once I get the pleating in, then I'm gonna see how much I can follow it and, and sew in some pleats or um, iron them in like hardcore. But we'll see when we get there. A lot of this is just you know, just going with the flow. I know what I want, but I also got to go with the flow. Only had so much material and all that stuff. So here's one that I did. What I did first before I did the sleeve, um, I did an overlock stitch on them so that way you could split it open. Can I split it open? It sticks together. Yeah, see, I split it open. And I didn't use a serger on this one because I was lazy and sewing on my kitchen table at the time. I didn't want to come in this room and do it. And then I also, I believe this was three inches. So like I, I, I started from here and I stopped. So I, I measured up three inches, put a marking, and then I just closed this off. And I left this open. And then I just rolled it up. Rolled it up, hem. I'm gonna put a button and buttonhole here so that way she can put her fist through it, close it a little bit tighter, and all that. So that's how I did the sleeve. So I'm gonna do that to the other one and then insert it here. Like I said, I'm gonna do the marking here, put in the elastic, and then scrunch it, and then work on further setting in the pleats that that I I need for this dress. So we're, we're on good, good standing. So here in the darkness, I've been working on the center part. So I inserted the elastic like, like, like I had said. Well, let me pull back a little bit. And um, what I was doing right now is I was like pinning and pleating. And then while it was on the mannequin, I was taking my iron and I was like steam setting a lot of these 
pleats like I'm just doing random pleats to get it to like start to, to try and come together more so that's what I've just been doing it's just like messing with with pleating it and then I also have let me get this this is helping me too because I can put my hand behind it and kind of like iron on my hand which is like it's like a heat a heat glove so I've been using that too while it's on the mannequin because like if I put this on the ironing board and I try and iron pleats it's not gonna it's not gonna follow the way that it drapes here because I'm just I'm just following the the draping that occurs naturally and then I'm like pushing and pleating it in further so it flattens out like that um, so yeah, so this is like a really big help. So pretty much I have that to finish. Let's do a little bit more pleating. Add the, the other sleeve, put in my zipper and then, and then I'm done. And then I just have to put the snap on the back of the capelet. But that, that's about it, so we're almost done. So this is it. As I stated before, I did put the elastic in the middle. Uh, basically the measurement from this seam to this seam, because remember there's, there's a seam right there. I put the elastic, um, it scrunched it quite nice. I did put a stuffing in the, the mannequin because I just opening it up all the way, I couldn't get it to the measurement that she is. So, I mean, you could do that too. Whenever that happens, we have, a there's a measurement that's off on your mannequin. You can always put a bra on it and stuff it or wrap foam around it to make it, you know, of that measurement. So here's this part. Um, like I said, I did end up going back after I, I put in the elastic. I just started ironing in pleats. What other features? trying to act like this is just the worst lighting oh my god okay so here's the back i inserted an invisible zipper in the center back and there's the capelet she does sew and i did i did mention this before she ordered i was like you know since i can't have a, an actual fitting with you you may have to take it to another seamstress for additional alterations but she's like i can sew so i'm i'm ho i did double check the measurements so i'm hoping that she really doesn't have to do much. If anything, maybe, you know, remove this or if she wants, cause I, there is a lot of overlapping in here just because, it, it, you know, it might be different when she puts it on, but I, I didn't put the snap because I figured that with the snap, it would just, you would see too much of the stitching. Like if whenever you do snaps, like there's like a, there's, there's four points on the step, like it's a wheel, right? Basically like a circle with a four points to stitch. And I just thought that would look, that would look messier. So I found a button, one of these little buttons in, in my button tin that I have. So perfect, very happy. Also, so I put the buttons, on the inside, I put two, just for mercy's sakes, because I feel like if there was like six buttons on each of that, that would drive me crazy, and I don't want to drive my consumer crazy as well. So I think two buttons is fine. If she wants to put more, she can. But that's just my own sanity's sake. Like two buttons, that's enough for like a sleeve. So yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with the way that it came out. And that's about it. If you guys have any questions about this costume, let me know. I answer questions, check DMs through Instagram, as long as you're not a weirdo and all that stuff. So thank you very much, guys. Bye-bye.